excellent feature of the Amazon Web Services is the ability to create AMI, AMIs which then can be instantiated many times. So what we've done here is that uh, we've actually built uh, an instance and then we'll take a copy of this to create an AMI from and create multiple copies of it. Okay, so the first thing we do is select our running instance. In fact, what we'll do is we'll connect to it first, just to make sure it's the right image that we want. And we'll just run the remote desktop. And we'll put in the password. That should connect in a little minute. There we go. Okay, so this seems to be the one that we actually do want to to run. Which is fine. So we'll just disconnect now. And then what we do is that, as we seen earlier, we create our AMI. It takes, it takes quite a while to actually create it, but once we've created it, it takes a short time to create the instances. So if we go to our AMIs, we actually see that it's, that it's building it here. We've created one earlier. So when we actually, when it's finished building, we should be able to then create our instances from here. Okay, so we'll just leave it to build there and we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, we're back. It's actually been about 40 minutes or so, but it's created our, our new AMI for us. Now what we can do is that uh, we can then launch some new instances if we want, based on this AMI. So go to my AMIs and there we are. We'll select this one. We could obviously do this by an, uh, by ATI, API calls or we can use the command line but we'll just do it from here just now. It just takes a little minute. So we can uh, define the RAM space that we have and, and so on, different kernels, but we'll just go for the default. And we need these key pairs to be able to recover any passwords and so on. So we just use a default then. And then we need to define our default security groups. So all the instances we create will have this shared security group for our firewalling. And that's it. So we can purchase an IP address if we need it. Uh, but if we now go to our dashboard, hopefully, we'll actually see that, uh, that we have a new instance pending. And there it is there. Just takes a little minute to start up. It takes about 10 seconds or so to actually create it. And, and run it. And then what we'll do is we'll be able to, there we go, so it's now created. It takes a, l a little while to sometimes get the remote desktop to to connect to it. And we can see there it's not quite ready to connect to. But if we look back at our ID we can see E0A0 and the new instance that we've created is based on E0A0. Okay, so there we go. Hopefully it'll be ready to connect to. We'll just have a quick connect to it. So the great thing is that our if we'd created it from a standard image then the password would have changed but in this case our password will be the same and all our user accounts and, and so on. Just 
takes a little while to get the remote desktop to to actually connect and it's not quite ready yet what we could do is we could try and, and connect it through the web server we'll just try one one more time just to see if it's if it's uh, actually ready to be connected to just takes a little minute and we'll just cancel cancel that it's obviously not ready yet right so let's try again we'll connect run our remote desktop and hopefully this time so I'm just using the same password as, as I used for the other instance and hopefully that will connect there we go and there is our instance and we're now logging into our server 2008 image where we can set up our web services so you can see that this example has shown us that we can actually create AMIs from an existing image so this is extremely useful if we need to distribute a certain image uh, around and and have it set up okay so that that shows that example and you can see here uh, the key thing is that uh, for our security group we've opened up ports for remote desktop, open up web and so on.